Hood Postman, City, Hood, Click. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Like the door on him. Like the door on him. Hood Postman, Hood Postman. Reporting live, reporting live. The hood postman, come and check the program. Doing from the streets, this is something you should know, man. Running from police, got a crypto with, with both hands. Speeding down the interstate, please do not approach him. 40s in the fridge, got the caddy in the driveway. Get all out of my face, I don't wanna violate. Looked up in the mirror and I told myself, why wait? We took this shit worldwide, you only in five states. Came from the four corners with my four quarters. Showed them the style, then they stole on us. Times got wild, then they told on us. Dog, it was hard, but we had to keep it rolling. You ain't gotta ask, you know where to find me I be in the back streets where it get grimy It's just me and Mel, Rennie looking bright deep I be going hard till I'm in the five seats uh. You know the vibes I'ma do it till I die I ain't never switch sides I ain't never had to tell a lie Let's ride You know the vibes I'ma do it till I die I ain't never switch sides I ain't never told a lie Shout out to the Mailroom Nation and the Mailroom Goons. I am Professor Melly Bell. I have a special guest in the house, Bride D, Bride Dog Bones Low, Mr. Slim Goody, Slim Pickers himself. Not Slim Goody, but Slim Pickers because he's so picky, y'all. He's so picky. But anyway, let me get to the content, man. Listen, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe. Drop a comment down below. So when this dope content hit, it'll feel like the first is 15. Welcome, welcome to the mail room. When you come in, take a look at your mind, examine what's in your heart. You can go anywhere in the world to get a couple of lives, but you come right here to get the truth. Get on the bus and let Bright Dog take you to school. Listen, guys, before they had hand guns, they had hand guys. Man, uh, man, listen, guys, I, I, I come here with a heavy heart today. And Bright Oaks, well, because Bright Oak has had shared moments and memories with this guy. We're talking about our fellow comrade, pretty boy, Rich Rowland, 6 0. Listen, guys, today, well, days ago, we lost another library. And I put this in terms of library in the sense of his acumen and things he brought to the culture as far as knowledge and wisdom and understanding and also writing the ship. Being able to have the the audacity to stick his hand in something that was shark infested, because we know there's a there's a lot of naysayers and sidewalk critics out there, but yet he 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 was resilient in that. And what I like to say to my comrade, another we lost a library, dear comrade, we watched you navigate the ups and downs of life. Your contribution to the Keyway history were invaluable and your efforts to correct the narrative were commendable you embraced the challenges that came your way with strength resilience knowing that each hurdle you overcame only added to your growth and wisdom the world is a much better place with your unique presence and we gonna miss you loved one we gonna miss you mr pretty boy your musical acumen your your intelligence and things in terms of how you saw things. Man, I can't, you know, I give props where props is due. You know, days before Bright Dog, well, Ma B from the mob put me on the phone with uh with Pretty Boy, right? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. And um he was telling me about this amazing book, incredible book he was writing. And I told him, bro, when you when you're done. We're going to link up. We're going to sit down and we're going to talk and we're going to break it down because I know I know it's going to be powerful because he was really an intelligent brother. But, Bright Dog, well, I got you here today because you actually spent time on the yard with that brother. Am I correct? Yeah, we was in Tracy together in 85, man. And uh, me and him, we used to – the thing was, when you went to the yard, man, you gravitated towards any homies that was out there, right? Uh-huh. And, and so when you went to the yard – 
you gravitated because it was a, it was gladiator school, it was a war zone. You gravitated to any homies that was on the yard. And for some strange reason, me and him half the time we didn't go. We 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 we, we used to meet each other and be the only two out there on the yard. And it was these back bleachers and Tracy. So we used to go to the back bleachers and, and just chop it up, you know. And uh, but prior to that, I had already heard his name out there in them streets because he's the mad shooter, you know. He was shooting everything up, you know. But uh, we had we had some in depth conversations, man. You know, some real in depth conversations. If I'm not mistaken, bro, he he actually had about nine cases out there that you know that he that he beat because he had he had a brilliant law legal mind as well. Am I correct? Yeah, he had he had he had he had a multitude of bodies, and uh, it's been said that the one body that he, he he got knocked down for, it was a mystery around if he actually did it, you know. But they couldn't get nothing else on. Right, 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 right. So you was on the yard and you guys were were in Tracy, correct? What was that atmosphere like, right off? Uh, it was a dog eat dog world, man. It was it was basically a uh, if you wasn't cut like that you wasn't gonna last like that didn't matter if you was a homie or not. Explain yeah. to me what it was. Give us a, a, up close in front. You know, put us let us be the theater of the mind. Give us the theater of your mind. The theater of my mind when I was in Tracy, I was a shit starter. I was uh, <laughs> I told Bubble rest in peace from Six Deuce East Coast. I said I'm gonna take you to Tracy with me. It was the CRC. I was down there for a hot minute. And I ended up taking him and T from 8-9 to uh, 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 Tracy with me. They said, you said you was going to bring us up here. I said, there's Rocket and Roll it up here. It was one of them spots, man, where somebody got hit every day. I remember, you know, it was three murders in one week, and we only stayed on lockdown four days. You know, so what year was this, brought out? Shout out to Rennie Glow. 85, 1985, man. 1985. And how much time did you and... and, and you and Pretty Boy spent on the yard together. Nearly uh, every day for the summer of 85. Nearly every day when we wasn't on lockdown. Uh, I'd hit the yard. He'd hit the yard. I'd see him out there when I left uh, school. You know, I, I was going to school. Um, well, vocation. I'd see him when uh, 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 I'd, I'd come down for lunch because I wouldn't go into child hall and eat. I'd go to the back of the yard. It was bleachers all the way at the far end of the yard. And for some reason, we'd always be sitting there and uh, doing our thing, you know, and just chopping it up. The only two homies out there until the rest of the homies came from lunch. Let me acknowledge the chat right quick, bro. Shout out to Marley, the William Postmaster General. Shout out to King Mike Mark. Shout out to Brian Grove. Shout out to Michelle. And shout out to Crystal Brand. Long time no see. See you in there. Rock Fresh. Um, Comedy Girl, actually, you're in there as well. Chips, Juice, and Money. There you go, right there. And everybody that's joined us, man. Everybody that's joining us, Michelle as well, and everybody else that's joining this chat, I appreciate it. It's, you know, this is something we got to do often, and um, we don't get enough time always. There's not enough time in the day for me to do all the things I like to do and have to do, and, and sometimes I'm a little behind on these lives, but I'm going to keep pumping them videos and them shorts. <laughs> you know that. But nonetheless, hey, Brian, uh, I'm, I'm smiling hey. on something. I'm, I'm looking at Pretty Boy right now, right? I'm, uh -huh. looking, I'm looking at a weird Tracy. He got on some blue 501s. Uh -huh. He got on a, a, a blue windbreaker. He got on some black Chuck Taylors. And he got a long ass ponytail. And we on the yard chilling. And he got some locs on. I'm just laughing down to something, something that he said to me on, on the yard. Oh, I'll give you no mind sharing. Uh, a guy got hit on the basketball court, and and it was about to be some stuff behind it, right? Uh huh. And he was he said to me, "I wish that would have been me." <laughs> and I said, "What you mean, right?" And he rolled up his jacket. That's where I got this from. And he had a thump, a, 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 a knife right here, and he had like a wristband and a wristband around it. And I laughed. I said, "Damn, that's slick." And so I started doing the same thing. So he gave you game on how to carry that, how to carry that knife up in that prison. Then. Yeah, searches, they wasn't really going like this back then. You know, you could just throw your hands up like that, and then go like that. You know. Oh, okay, that was the slick move. Put your hands up, and yeah. they ain't with your hands. They just gonna hit your body <laughs> with a scan. 
Because he, he told me to take your glasses off. Because I never used to take my glasses off, right? Uh -huh. That's what that so. And, and, and he's like, take your glasses off. And I'm like, why? He's like, I want you to see something. And then when he did it, I took my glasses off. I went like this, though. Damn, why you do that? <laughs> you know? But I was just laughing at that. That's, that's something he showed me, man. And, and we both always used to have on our 501s. And, 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 I, and I, I chucks, you know, that was the tire. Were there any more joints besides Tracy that you guys spent time in? Now, that was the only one we spent time in, but we spent a lot of time because, you know, he used to, you know how they say he kicked them stories up, right? But his stories was authentic. They was like basically documented ones. He was a mad shooter. When the man was on the streets, he was a mad shooter. And it, that's 160 that I say was a mad shooter, you know. But uh, we 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 shared some, you know. And it's it it, it it was amazing how humble he became and how committed he became to the narrative of of the history because there's a lot of there's a lot of key ways that won't say a word and they think they're doing they're helping the cause. No, you when you do, when you're quiet and you don't say nothing, you're hurting the cause because there's too many boys out here that's been raised in, in the. And I'm not gonna say. They just been not rightly raised, right? And they don't have have uh, a lot of female emotions attached to them, and they're very reactionary. So it's men like yourself, myself, and 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 and, and pretty boy, and gangster, and and bam, and and and, and other individuals, cutes and stuff. You know, people people of those ilk that's able to come on these airwaves and say things that's that's profound and get these guys, we, we trying to give them hope and we trying to let them see a bigger picture because at the end of this game that you're playing, there's only two things, three things. Actually, there's either life in prison, death, or you wind up in a wheelchair. Right. So, and we try to, we try to give you guys shed light on these things because we, the things, the places you are, you're trying to go, we already been, and we know the end of that story. Yeah, he used to tell me this though, because Pretty Boy was a. Uh, I think I was I was twenty one and he was like 23, 23, 24, right? A couple years older than me. But I remember when he used to tell me, you know, because 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 I knew a lot of ETGs and he, he used to tell me like, man, I never was tripping with them dudes so they got at me. He said when they got at me, he said, oh man, and I said, oh man, I said, well, I ain't in that man, you know, you know, because I wasn't in that, you know, and at that time they were literally the only two that were beefing. Those uh, those two right there, and the nine O's and the Hoovers. And that was the extent of it, you know. As far as on Keyway on Keyway, uh -huh. you know? but but as far as the LA thing that I know about, and, and but he's always tell me like, man, man, I just bust on whoever bust on me, and I, I said, what you mean by that? He said, and, and, and it was sort of this is why we was kindred spirits. He wasn't going after the mediocre guys. He was going after the hitters. That's what he said. I said, that's how I get it. But, you know, like I said, the, the, the cool thing is one thing he never gave up hope. He used to always tell me. Because I used to like, you got a Buck Rogers date. That's what we used to call him back then. It was a show yeah, called I remember Buck that. Rogers. remember that. And dudes that had 27 to life always used to say they had Buck Rogers date. He said, but I'm going to go home. Watch. He said, yeah, you'll see me. You'll see me out there one day. He used to always tell me that. And sure enough, true to his words, he was there. You were there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People, man, it, it, it's it's amazing and incredible when I see a lot of you guys that spend just an enormous amount of time in prison, how your minds operate and how you maneuver in these streets. You know, most of you guys move like businessmen, people that's running corporations, or you, you're helping the needy and you, you, you overcame some obstacles that that most people would would not survive. I seen people go the prison and come out and they, and they literally lose their mind, especially yeah. with the, the amount of time that they were having, you know. Take a strong individual, but you know, and, and, and just to segue on something, you know, it takes a strong individual to do all that time, right? Uh-huh. And I think, you know, what I've been hearing in the streets, and I'm quite sure you've been here, it's going to take a lot of stronger individuals to, it's a saying, man, about Crip on Crip warfare, I got this saying. I might not like you, but I love your last name. So all these Crips is beefing with each other, man. They don't got to like each other, but they still love each other's last name because they put it on, they, they got the same last names. 
And I've been hearing things in the streets. Have you been hearing things in the streets about brothers trying to broker uh, a ceasefire among rival Crips? Yeah, I have. I've been hearing a lot of talk behind the scenes. Uh, actually, Marcus Mack, he died from pneumonia. He died from complications yeah. of pneumonia. I forgot to put that in. I appreciate yeah. the fact that the big homies are the Palmer Oaks Gangster Crips for a part of the Gangster Car. Uh, we'll answer that a little later. Uh, yeah, you're right, uh, uh, Bright Dog. Uh, there, there, there seems to be a movement, right? Even when we saw the Hoovers saying that they're Crips, right? And, right. and this is not nothing, Pierce. This is not nothing against the Damu because the Damu's got to fix their problems. And the key ways have to fix our problems. And then at, at the, we're meeting in the middle and then we'll fix the black issues of the, you know, other words, it'll be like a societal autopsy because all the things that's troubling us, if we fixed them, there would be less police, there would be less uh, 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 funds going to the police because there would be actually no crimes. There would be no gang banging and none of that. So all that money would come back to our community and we'll be able to utilize it in the process of putting these young kids in programs. I was just looking at some stuff. I would, I would recommend a lot of kids start becoming like going to those tech jobs, you know, uh, coding and respiratory therapists and, and gen, uh, uh, um, dental hygienists and different things. There's a lot of things you can go and just get the vocation, vocationary uh, aspect of it and you be certified in these positions and you be good to go because you're spending countless of times out in these streets and you can be on had had your vocational uh, uh, scholarship or your vocational training done with all the time you're wasted in the streets. But yeah, right on the, uh, let's see, the Raymond's been talking. Even I heard uh, Santana was talking to some Souths. Uh, uh, I heard the five so, trays, the four trays been talking. Yes, yes, five tray, four tray. So there's a lot of movement going on, guys, and hopefully, hopefully we can fix this stuff and, and just get on, just get on one, uh, one accord. You, you know, know what get together. You know what I find mind-boggling, Melly Mel? What's that? And 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 I'm not I'm not knocking it. I applaud it actually. Is that? For a long time, F-13 have been crossing out all they sees, right? And then all of a sudden, some, some individuals, some heavyweights from the coast, from the six-pack, was able to broker a ceasefire. They ain't got to love each other, but let's stop this madness, right? right? Now, I say to myself, if us as Keyways, because the six-pack is a part of the Keyway Nation. Six uh -huh. the original neighborhood, you know, set on the east side. Uh -huh. and, but I'm not saying it was six Goose, but I'm just speaking on, you know, that. Uh -huh. Never, if Keyways could broker peace with a Serenio gang that there's been losses on both sides, tremendous losses. Why can't we broker peace amongst each other? That's mind boggling to me. And then another thing that trips me out, all these dudes that, you know, emulate these old time Europeans that call themselves Capones, Nitties, Luckies, and so on and so on, and Gotties and so on. Well, all them dudes killed each other's sons and they brokered peace. So why can't, you know, cats who want to emulate them old school dudes and cats that recognize that that was the talk of the town. You know, the coast and, and, and F-13 ain't beefing no more. You know, they don't kick it. It ain't no like, hey, you know, but they ain't got no beef. If they can do it, why can't we do it? That's something to ponder, you know, just for whoever's out there listening from different sets. And that's a great question, Kiva. Look what Kiva said. He said, in the 90s, Vlad TV or Adam 23 wouldn't have been able to do what they do. That's true. Exactly. True. And then another thing, one other thing, we broke a piece amongst each other. Guess who benefits from it? The kids. Uh-huh. Guess who could walk safely down the street now? And ain't because I was looking at some graffiti on the wall, and I'm not gonna say no sets, but I work in Los Angeles, you know. And uh -huh. I saw this set swacked out, that set swacked out, and they was both rip sets swacked out by another rip set, right? Uh-huh. And I said to myself, you know, I didn't turn into a reaction because none of the Damus, but they didn't even have no B blank or none of the local bloods around them swacked out. They just had crip sets. And I was like, boy, this thing went to a whole different level. You know? I would like to see all of us, whether it's the, 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 the Crips, I would like to see us all come in to the Coliseum and just have one great big old sit down. 
and we have two representatives from each section take the podium what we will use our brilliant speakers we'll use our brilliant speakers the people that have the mindset not the dudes not the the squabblers and and, and the dudes that call the shots and the dudes that call the meetings and the dudes that 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 look at the paperwork and all that stuff we don't need those dudes because those dudes that they, they tend to sometimes can be a little bit over the top with, with their so we need the brilliant minds of both the damus and the keyways to come to podium and just start explaining what our movement should be and how how can we last in this storm because the storm is coming bro it's coming I you know agree. and i don't know if you know i'm i'm gonna say this too and i and i know it's a little off base but if you go into walmart they're locking up everything in a minute nobody will be able to go into these stores you would have to order everything that you want right they're forcing you to not come into Walmart. If you're going to Walmart and you got to wait 20, 30 minutes for them to unlock something for you to get to purchase it, that don't make sense. So what they're trying to do is force everybody out. So keep everybody out these stores. And then that way, that that's another way of reducing crime because Walmart is losing millions and millions of dollars of people coming in and, and taking, right? right? So, and I'm adding that because all that's part of the equation because we're not looking at everything all the parameters and everything is around us and it was guys like like pretty boy and it's guys like yourself and guys like cutes and bam and and uh and and a gangbangers life coach and care back so, yeah the little crazy man he's doing tremendous work on a gangbangers life coach you know and, and i was this man somebody said to me earlier today that a hoover i think his name is cork rest in peace he plugged so many dudes that he was in prison with with jobs that were Crips and Damus too, but, but focusing on Crips, because this is what this topic is about to me right now, that were neighborhoods, Raymonds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the job site, they said it was like a, a prison yard in the sense of this, not beef, but you got your Comptons right here, your Watts right here, but all of them knew each other from the penitentiary and had a camaraderie and kicked it with each other. Yet their neighborhoods on the streets are adversaries. So this man plugged it where he got a lot of dudes economically in position, right? I believe his name was Cork. Rest in peace. From either five dudes or five nine Hoover. Uh -huh. But rest in peace. But the point I'm just making is, we need to take a prison mentality, not functioning in prison, not being institutionalized, but a mentality that we utilize at the workforce because a lot of us that get out of prison see dudes that are adversaries of our neighborhood that we cool as a fan with at work. Some of us go have a beer with them after work. Man, you know it's nothing better than the ability, the ability to earn and make a living and, and make good money, man. There's nothing better than that. You feel really well. You feel confident. You you know, your family structure becomes better. Everything. But I want to say this again, brother. Today, guys, we lost another. Well, not today. Yesterday or the day before we lost a library. And I, and I always put these guys in terms of library because they're informational. They were very informed. They was intelligent. They can articulate words to us in a way that we, we can embrace it because we come from them same neighborhoods and the same streets and blocks and alleys and parks that they came from. So I say to, to, to Pretty Boy, dear Conrad, we watched you navigate the ups and downs of life. Your contribution to the Keyway history was invaluable. And your efforts to correct the narratives were commendable. So I just want to say that, man, because we can't get away from that. We have these individuals, you know. We there's a time where we we get we veer off the course a little bit, but we always able to come back and right the ship. So I want to just guys, let's keep riding the ship. Let's embrace the our blood brothers. Let's embrace our Hoover brothers. Let's embrace our brother brothers. Let's embrace everybody. So we can get on this one accord, man. I, I'm happy to hear that the Raymonds are having discussions. I'm happy to hear that Avalon and Avalon Fire Train and Boat Trains are having discussions. And even what you said, the East Coast was able to broker some and acknowledge with the uh, with the uh, Mexican brothers over there in uh, South Central on the East Side. But yeah, uh, let's do it, Bri. I'm with it, bro. Yeah, because you know, I, 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 I where I work at, like I said, I work in the field, right? Uh huh. And I work in the field on my job. I work in the mental health field, but I work in the field, you know. And I used to go down there on, at, on, on by South Park on, on, on 51st and Avalon. And, you know, the the, 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 the five trays 
in the, in the East Side Playboys, they like intermingle with each other. Not not you know you know they kick they they cool as a fan. I used to always see them together. You know all you know. So I just say that if you have have pockets of the city where you got brown that that don't have problems with blacks, then we need. And, and I'm speaking on a gang mentality. Then we need to come together and realize, like I said, we need to clean our backyards first. I'm not talking about rolling dudes up and I'm talking about as far as clean our backyards on like, why are we still beefing with each other? And most of the beefs are 40 years old. And then the, 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 throw, the throw fuel on the fire, quit listening to the mess that's going on the, on the internet. If people is not offering some type of a, a solution or they're not giving you things to, in terms of see how we can right this ship or they just coming on and just outing and being messy man y'all got to get away from that bro that's not good for our culture that's not that's not taking us somewhere that we need to be it's only making us look more silly because we're the only ones doing it you know you don't see no you don't see the asian people doing it you don't see well mexicans may might be a little iffy there but they're not doing like we're on the level that we're doing it right white people is not doing it uh, um, the uh, Arab people are not just, it's just us, man. And, and we come down and tear each other apart, man. It just, it breaks my heart, really. It breaks my heart. And uh, <laughs> one of the things I did, brother, I had to unsubscribe the clubhouse because I don't see, I don't see no growth there, nothing. And I know we both used to be part of the clubhouse, but we both had to get away from it. We couldn't tame it. And see, that's one thing. That's why for y'all out there, I ain't been on the internet in a while because I just got sick of it. It just made me want to throw up to see how certain puppeteers that aren't that don't look like you and I, don't look nothing like us, are, are always having dudes beefing to where I think that it may get to the point where them dudes might see each other on a Tuesday night in a dark alley and gun each other down over a puppeteer who don't look nothing like us, who's getting rich off of putting us against each other. Uh, the 22s, the Vlads, and so forth, right? So I just got sick of the internet. I ain't been on it for five months. I just got sick of it. Yeah, they're the KBGs, man, the keyboard gangsters, you know, anonymity and the fact that you don't you don't know where they at or the distance that's that's between you and them. You you know, it's like they could say things to you that will get them punched in their face if they, if they was in front of you, you know. So, you know. I look at the only I look up. at on that mail. I look at you, of course. I look at Rini Loke, of course. I look at gangster, you know. I look at, you know, I look at gangster. I look at hoodie hood. I look at life coach, like uh, gangbangers, life coach, Lil Crazo. I look at cartoon from Fire Trey. Oh and yeah, that's my guy. Shout out to cartoon from Fire Trey. That's 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 about you know as far as when I glance at the internet now, that's who I literally glance at because I can get an intelligent observation. I can get an intelligent. Oh, you talking about little coat dog, Brody? He said, "Okay, is that that okay? Whoever that dude is, his name was such a prolific name on on getting jobs with homies from everywhere." Yeah, little coat dog. That's from Five Deuce. Rest in peace. Okay, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Long respect to. I I didn't personally know him, but I know of him. Long respect to him. You know. He didn't differentiate between if you was cool with me, you was cool with me. Was this is this, this thing as far as with the keyways? You need Shout a job, slick man. What you got, slick? Oh, we got slick in here. Yeah, he's in there. <laughs> Whatever he say, slick, slick. I love you too, cause you go say something slick in a minute. Yes, yeah, so you know, yeah, like like and, and a download pretty boy music, man. I believe his name is Leo Victor. Download his music. Man, he he he, he was committed to to his stuff, man. He was he was very he was laser focused, man. He, and uh that's one of my thing. One of my things is music too. I read sheet music, I read uh I play horns, you know. I haven't done it in a while because I've been so distracted by right. this that I shouldn't even have been a part of in the first place. I, I probably wouldn't have been a, been a just probably one of the best at it by now you know but that can't say that now that's that's behind me because but i still have the ability to do it you know it's just big day what's up man shout out to big day my loved one right there man but you, you know we come in full circles yeah. man we come in full circles and your contribution be it your con contribution via this channel 
is enlightening because you always got words of wisdom that you drop prior to saying lock the door, you know, get it, <laughs> you know. So, you know, it's it's just that we outnumbered on the internet, us to try to put forth positivity. We are uh -huh. actually outnumbered. You know, we're from a generation of controversy. Not yeah. our generation, but the generation now thrives on controversy. But why do we look to tear down before we build up? You know, what what is that about our culture that we, we come in with, you know, just with the negative? I'm not saying everybody, nothing is ever 100 percent. It just seemed like we go charging in with the negativity. You know, it's like we we didn't learn nothing, man. I know I came from a two parent home. You did. And a lot of other brothers did, too. You know, we know right from wrong, man. But just I don't know. I don't know. Why we so enamored and so activated by just street stuff, you know? Maybe we, we were cut off. We was cut off in the 70s and the 80s. I'm not going to lie. We were Reaganomics and, and all that different stuff had us in a chokehold, a full Nelson, you know, believe that. So a lot of the things that, that came from that was, you know, we was kind of forced and pushed in certain areas of aspects of life. And we took up certain jobs that wasn't necessarily jobs, you know, because I, I went to the feds for running my own pharmaceutical because I didn't have a license, you know. Yeah, I went to the feds for doing withdrawals from banks from accounts that wasn't mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, but I think, man, what it is is nowadays dudes want to try to say to the generations before them, y'all can't do it like we doing it. But we wasn't like that. We didn't try to outshine the next generation. If anything, we tried to learn from the old school hustlers and the first generations of homies. You know, this generation now, what they don't even realize, man, is you getting 25 to life for a gun enhancement on an attempted murder where you ain't shot nobody that you got 150 years on because six people were standing out there. And then that same dude who you gunned down or tried to gun down his homeboys, you're going to be in the reception. They're going to put you in the cell with one of his homies who got the same amount of time. And y'all ain't got time to be tripping on that because you're in the reception center. You got time to like you got to focus on everything else around you. So that's why I don't I don't get a lot of it. And then you have more Crips wear red nowadays than Bloods to me. Yeah, and you're right, Rock Fresh. Being smart is seen as lame in our culture, in our community. I found myself having to stop hanging and dumbing. Yeah, you get, and that's true. We we got to get away from that. We can't dumb ourselves down. I used to do that as well. Dumb myself down and make others feel comfortable around me, you know? Yeah, I'm tired of being the smartest dummy. <laughs> you know? Because that's what it is, man, you know? But I, I think I think, you know, I think that it needs to be what you just said, some, some prolific speakers from, from Generation Now who just, you know, did like 10 years in the Y, six years in the Y, one of them that did like seven, eight years in them level fours, and then a homie that did decades that speak on who was one of your tightest partners that your neighborhood don't get along with that was your road dog in the penitentiary. So why can't, you know, you understand what I mean? Yes, I do. <laughs> And you know, and you're right. People don't know the hurdles that we had to overcome. Came overcome. It only added growth and wisdom to who we are today. And, 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 and I'm thankful for that. But at the same time, I wish I just would have just took the right route in the first place. You yeah. know. But everything you are makes you everything you're not, and everything you're not makes you everything you are. You got to life to come full circle. You had to go through everything in life, like I said earlier to you. To, to put out the positive messages that you put out. Things that you say resonate with people across the nation, out of the country. Here it is, here it is, a brother out of Compton, and not taking nothing from Compton because we produce brilliancy, but here it is, a brother out of Compton has an audience globally. Okay, so with that being said, it's like people tell me in my classes that I teach, I teach classes. Uh -huh. they, people tell me in my classes that I teach, that they take something from my classes that helps them get through life. So you don't know who you're affecting, but you've had your full circle of your self-imposed obstacles to come into this, what you are today to affect the people that you affect via your channel, man. Yeah, I did some uh, some videos with CJ out of the mob, man, another brilliant brother, man. I want to give him a shout out too, man. I'm, I'm going to keep encouraging him to keep coming to the uh camera and keep speaking you know because 
you, there's needed over in his section and over also in the looter section. Hopefully, hopefully Marcus Nunn would take up his position and come to the, you know, because and, and, and don't be afraid of the Internet. Just this be this be astute, be be intelligent and be on point and, and stay the course. Don't let nobody take you from the course, you know, and, and, and people you guys saw me. At one time, I got taken off my course, you know, and, and I rightly, I, I extinguished that fire and, and also closed the door to, to that subject matter. And also, I, I, I quit entertaining the clowns. I don't buy tickets for the circus because I don't like clowns. I just don't. There's, it, it, it's a very unnecessary thing that we have in this culture. It's something that we really, really just don't need, man. And and I'm gonna continue to work with CJ and c continue to encourage him. And also my brother, my little brother over there, Five Trey, a little Avalon Blue. I'm gonna keep encouraging him. Very well spoken. Uh, look, uh, cartoons homeboy. He speaks really well. Murdoch out of there speaks really well. So I'm gonna keep encouraging individuals I know that has the the mental gymnastics and the testicular testicular fortitude to get out there and put things in, in and make it MIP, make it plain to where even a five-year-old will understand what's being said. Yeah, because a lot of two, a lot of things too, like, okay. And you too, Bright Hawk, I can't take you out of it because you, you say some things that, that that's very relevant and very uh, peaceful, but at the same time, you bones low. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But, you know, I was just thinking, you know, but it's what and people were able to articulate and then to lead by examples. When you look at the legacy of Pretty Boy, look at like he's self-taught on that guitar. Uh-huh. So just say to yourself that everybody out there, if the mind can conceive, then you can achieve. Uh-huh. He taught himself how to play a guitar. Uh-huh. And became dang good at it. So it's the same thing with any of us. It's just like y'all said. Man, generation now, y'all need to look into STEM, coding, so on, so on, so on, so on. Man, you know, because the streets, man, the paraphrase bodacious, the streets are undefeated. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I got that from Lee Ford. That came from Lee Ford. That quote came from Lee Ford. Okay, because I heard Bod that bodacious was the first person I said from Compton in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that came from Lee Ford. The streets okay. are undefeated, man. Bodacious, what bodacious said that the that America created ninjas. <laughs> you know. uh, uh, shout out to Big Buzz from Under the Groove. Uh, would love to sit down with that brother as well and, and just, you know, share my yeah. thoughts and, and listen to what his are and just see where we yeah. can meet and, and just give give the world something better. Yeah, I was next. And I, I checked them out occasionally too, you know, especially my old Sally Holy Ray was on there. You know, it's good to see Holy Ray, you know, finally touched. But yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I check them out too. Okay. Yeah, challenge, challenge yourself to produce greatness, and and that's you're right. You're right, Neil. Challenge yourself to produce greatness, and that should be all our task. You know, um, we got to reposition ourselves. Shout out to Big Mitch in the house. Super, super eight. There you go. <laughs> super six. My bad. <laughs> Big Mitch, what's going on, man? From Vegas, from the Vegas Chronicles. That's my guy over there, and we got to. You're right. We got to challenge ourselves to be bigger and better, man. Just always. I think that we can, we can, we can win this. We can win this. Yeah, definitely. We can, you know, just like you said, challenge yourself. Every day dudes should look in the mirror and ask themselves, am I going to be stupid today or am I going to be progressive today? When you hit them streets, because, you know, I'm thinking about writing a book called a uh, Russian roulette 40 years plus. I think and you should do it. You know, and you know what the Russian roulette means? Every gang member that steps out his door every day plays Russian roulette. You don't know if it's going to be your ticket punch today. You put a pistol to your head every day that you step out that door. And we, we and it just dawned on me about a few months ago. Man, I was playing Russian roulette since I was 12 years old. Straight playing Russian roulette. You know, and that's what we do from both ends, from all over, you know. Uh-huh. And you got to get tired of playing Russian roulette. You have to, because we don't look at it like that when we out there. But it's yeah, Russian. You, you put yourself in, 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 in victim status every day. That's what it yeah. comes down to. Yeah. You know. Definitely. And, and I didn't realize that, man. 
I was playing Russian roulette with a snub nose 38 with three in the three in the hole and spinning it and taking a chance every day. And and my children's mother think You I'm, got lucky every day and all the people, how many times they gotta be lucky? Just once. Just once. All it takes is one one hit. Yeah. You know, one shot. And you out of here, you know. I'm green. That's my guy right there, man. What's going on with you, Green? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's something that just hit me a couple of months. Lunatics, uh, uh, nephew. Who's whose nephew? My homie Lunatic. He rested okay. pigs. Okay, okay. Yeah, but did you did you did you ever look at it in that analogy, Mel? That you play Russian roulette every day? You stepped out your front door. Yeah, I didn't look at it in terms of how you explain it, but that's what it was. Yeah, I, it never it never dawned on me that I played Russian roulette every day, especially being known as a shooter. So I was a target off the bat. You know, but man, you know, I just think, man, that that this this thing's beautiful, man, and that that dudes are talking behind closed doors. Uh huh. And you know, it, it, everything starts with a conversation. Everything, even when you're doing negativity, it starts with a conversation. It takes somebody to say, "I'm about to go put in some work. Who want to come?" That started with a conversation. Absolutely. So, how about when somebody say? Or when you push up and you're like, damn, I was I was on the yard with him. I ain't for the bus on him. We was cool. Unless you just that super extra out, over dedicated to whatever you embrace. Yet at some point, something has to transcend that on relationships. You know. And I'm 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 I support anyone, any any keyway hood that's trying to broker peace with somebody to share their last name. Yeah, big homie. Shout out to you, postman, mailman. You always on top. Big news about to happen on the east side. Gangster car. You heard the part of it from me on the right platform. There you go, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. That's right. So, 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 so true, true that then. It's, it's truth to what is truth to what's being said then. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and it has to happen, man. We can't. We've been doing this since 19, well, earlier part, it, it wasn't like this, but yeah, but it evolved into what it is today. And I don't think none of those kids fully understand, you know, what it really was or how it actually got started. I think there's so many narratives out there. And some of the narratives are out there only because it has a dollar, dollar assessment attached to it. You know, I, I wake up and do this stuff there was a period of time where I didn't get a, not one quarter, man, but you know, it just, it, it's, hey. it's crazy, man. It's crazy, man. I can't even, now, man, you know, could have witnessed the Coliseum at the world's greatest funk festival. If generation now could have witnessed that with homies from everywhere, uh -huh. I was 14 years old. It would have blew their mind. Especially yeah. with Rick oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But there's a lot of right on there's a lot of fake people out there and they like four quarters just change for a dollar. Yeah. If you get what I'm saying, they'll change for a dollar, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's just what it is, man. But that was lack of preparation too on a lot of them yeah. for for a future. You know, my last ten years in the feds, I prepared for, for being free. And, and and that's what we had to do as myself. I prepared for being free. I prepared to live a, a, a legal life, free of drama, free of, of things that, that just, I just, you know, I was sharing today. Uh, I had got a letter, right off, and I don't know if I shared this with you. I had got a letter. Obviously, somebody I've been talking to where their, their phone were being wiretapped, right? Uh-huh. So after the end of the wiretap, I, they send me a letter and said, hey, your number was picked up and we surveillance your number for uh, you was uh, talking to somebody. And, and, and now that the surveillance is over, they sent me. A, I, I was like, huh? Never, <laughs> never, never got nothing like this. You know what I mean? And so I'm just telling you guys, don't think these people is not watching and don't think they're not paying attention. They are. So when I got that that letter it only reinforced the what what's already what's already known they're on instagram they're on 
Uh, somebody was telling me their nephew, their nephew got their mom's house raided because he was on Instagram doing uh, just uh, all kind of things, and he was putting every he was putting the money, putting everything on Instagram. One night, boom, they come in there and grab him. You know. Yeah, I just seen the damnedest thing on the feed today. Two dudes got a dude in the back seat dead talking about this how we do it. Wow. And the dude was actually dead. Yeah, head honcho. Yeah, that was my guy right there. He said James Brown landed the helicopter. Jordan I. <laughs> yeah, so right off, you know, when I got the letter, let me finish that part. When I got the letter, I'm like, before or prior, they wouldn't tell me nothing. They would just come arrest my butt, you know. Right. <laughs> But like, now that I'm a law-abiding citizen and I'm not on the phone talking reckless about nothing, I'm not indulged in some nefarious type of operation or whatever, you know, they sent me a letter saying that, hey, we just, you know, we removed you from the situation. So, hey, thankful for that. And then the crazy part about three people I know got the same letter. And, but you know what else, Mel? Remember uh, last year, I believe when I told you, I said, man, these people, they called me. To come pick up some firearms that was clean that they uh -huh. 40 years ago because they got me down as a, a legal citizen and that they took the firearms out of the illegal house. But I'm like, man, I ain't touching that with a 10 foot pole. But our status now in society through observations and our endeavors is those of returning citizens that are exactly that citizens. Uh huh. Yet it was crazy to me. Remember, I told my man, I don't know what y'all talking about. Not coming to get nothing. I thought it was a trap, you know. And but it's just the point that the point I'm making is, I got a summons for jury duty. I did too. I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, yeah, I'll be surprised when I'll be getting that stuff, man. I say so they won't be on a jury. Yeah, yeah. this is crazy. But I I got to go do it because somebody's life is in jeopardy and if i could go in there and look at the facts and be be the one that save them then that's what i'm gonna do yeah that's that's the same way you know that after, so i'm like wow they, they didn't send me a summons for jury duty so i really and they sent me a summons to register to vote all kind of stuff i'm like yeah. all right okay so i really am a returning citizen you know but it's like this man and and for y'all out there listening the conversation that we have we know we went a little sideways but look, we have a conversation like normal human beings. Uh huh. That's what we have a conversation about. Who would have thought 20, 30 years ago we'd be talking about jury duty and the legalities of them notifying you that you're yeah. and, and paying, paying taxes and, and voting oh. and stuff? <laughs> you know, you know, we never did in the 80s. We weren't paying no taxes. Taxes? Taxes? <laughs> Serious? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Some some cigarettes <laughs> on, a, on a bill. <laughs> All the income, the income was the shoebox, <laughs> you know. But yeah, man, shout out once again to Pretty Boy, man. I'm about to step up out of here, Mel. Condolences to us, man. Thank you for joining us, brother. We appreciate. It. We gotta have you more often for your intellect and your intelligence, and in, in terms of how you see this this lifestyle, man, and help be one of the ones that turn the rich that can fix the nuts and bolts and screws to keep making us better. I mean, you, I like to call it a, a satiatal autopsy. It's definitely needed. I appreciate you. Love you. One love. Love you too. One love. And I got the wrench for anybody that need my assistance, man, on getting this thing where our kids could go to the parks and we ain't got to worry about our little brothers and nephews walking up the street who don't even, ain't even affiliated, just live over there. All right. Shut right on. Two of us. Mad love. Right on. Guys, I, I want to say, man, you know, again, you know, we lost a library and we've been losing libraries like more often than soon than, than we anticipated. You know, uh, he was a library. And I like to say, you know, dear, dear comrade, you know, uh, pretty boy, we watched you navigate this ups and downs of life. Your contribution to Keyway history were I invaluable and your efforts to correct the narrative were commendable. You know, you embraced the challenges that came your way with strength and resilience, knowing that each hurdle you overcame only added wisdom 
knowledge and understanding. And the world was a much better place with your unique presence. That's what I have to say to our brother, our fallen comrade that lost his life to um, pneumonia. And I hope everybody can pick up on this conversation and also embrace embrace the brotherhood, embrace the sisterhood, and embrace one another and begin to be build and repair our community. Shout out to Marlena Williams for doing such an amazing, incredible job. We appreciate you. Uh, once again, be, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Drop a comment down below so when the dope content hit is first and the 15th, guys. I'd like to welcome each and every last one of you to the mail room where you can come in and take a look at your mind and examine what's in your heart. And I, I love each and last one of you. And I'm committed to, to sharing my wisdom and knowledge and understanding and purifying my heart at the same time and just, you know, begin to grow. And right off, that was a, a Napoleon Hill quote. What you, what your mind believe, it can achieve. That's Napoleon Hill. If anybody know about Napoleon Hill, he was a beef. Andrew Carnegie, Thomas Edison, and some of the other ones that he learned under. But with that being said, I appreciate you, each and last one of you guys. Lock the door. Proof of grind all the time, baby. Yeah. yeah. Kelly Vines, baby. <laughs> Proof of grind all the time. Music money. Got a dollar sign. I'm a street nigga, streets fuck with me I'ma keep pushing products till the fans get me It's Guap off top, Diamond Cordier That nigga wall won't give a broke bitch the time of day They see me climbing, they see me shining That's hard work, proof of grinding New money got me tipping in that 550 I leave bad man and I'm so pretty I got that tech that's my hater sprayer Go big, grind now, nigga, play later What can I say? I'm addicted to this paper stocking And I don't talk about it I just make it happen Marlene Williams, lock the door Cause we are gone